Hey friends, Xander Fryer here with Shit You Don't Learn in College, and today I wanna to go through three ways to help you turn negative thoughts into positive ones. Now, we've all heard that positive people get more success in life. They're happier, they have better relationships, they get paid more in the nine to five, they're better at building businesses, they're better in all areas of life because they're just happier and more people wanna be around them. But some of us know that we've got some negative thoughts and maybe we're just kind of negative people and then we beat ourselves up a little bit more because we go, man, I'm a negative person, that makes me shittier. So now we're thinking even more negative thoughts and we take ourselves down a spiral. So now we went from being one level of negativity to two level of negativity. And now we're worried if everybody else is focused on us being negative. So we're worried about that too. So now we're triple negative and it just keeps getting worse. All right, I don't want that for you, all right? So the real question becomes, can I start to become a positive person? Can I start to become a positive thinker? If I've been a negative thinker my whole life? Well, I wanna tell you a little story. When I was in second grade, I was the dumb kid. That's right. Super intelligent, handsome, beautiful Xander was the dumb kid. In second grade, I took an aptitude and IQ test and I was the lowest in the class. And I was basically told that I wasn't going to pass second grade. Now, my parents being amazing parents, my mom said, oh, he's cute, he'll get by anyways. We don't care if he's dumb. Thanks mama, I love you, not helpful. My second grade teacher actually pulled me aside outside of class one day and said, Xander, do you want to be smart? And I thought about it for a second. And I said, yeah, I really do want to be smart. And she said, if you want to be smart, you can be. You're just going to have to work really hard at it. So I took that to heart and I learned what Carol Dweck calls the growth mindset at seven years old and it absolutely changed my life. In second grade, I worked really hard and I ended up passing second grade, much to everybody's surprise, including my loving mothers. I ended up passing third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. By the time I got to middle school, I had to go to the high school to take math. By the time I got to high school, I had to go to the local university to take math. By the time I graduated high school, I had finished all of my college calculus, physics, and mathematics for my engineering degree at UCLA, even before I stepped foot on campus. So I went from being the dumbest kid in class to being one of the brightest at one of the top engineering schools in the world. Now, how can that happen? It happens because you can change who you are, you can change your beliefs, you can change how smart you are, you can change from being a negative person to a positive person. Anybody can change any aspect of their life if you have enough commitment, decision, and emotional energy to really make it happen. So right now, now that you know you can do it, I wanna give you the three tips to help you turn the negative into the positive. So let's get going. Now the first step to doing this might also be the scariest step to doing this. The negativity, the fears, the frustration, the anger, all of those things that you don't wanna feel, all of those things that you're running away from, you have to feel them. I know, a little bit scary, right? Scientifically proven, there are literally centuries and encyclopedias of psychotherapy works and psychiatry works on the fact that the only way through an emotion is through an emotion. You have to feel the emotion. A majority of our negative thoughts are undealt with emotions. So 5% of our brain is our conscious mind, 95% of our brain is our subconscious. So when we have a negative emotion, we say, I am angry but I don't like to be identifying as an angry person because people don't like angry people. So we say, I am angry. And then instead of feeling that anger, we go, oh, I don't wanna feel angry. So we turn off the 5%. The 5% of our conscious mind, we turn it off to anger. Where does that anger go? It goes and marinates in that 95% of your brain. And now you find yourself with these recurring, uncontrollable, habitual thoughts of anger and frustration. You're like, where did that thought come from? And it makes you even more frustrated that these thoughts are coming from somewhere and you don't know where they're coming from. It's because they're buried in that 95% of your brain. The only way through an emotion is to move through it. E-motion, emote is a Latin word for emotion. E to eject, moat to move through. Emotions were meant to move through us. But if we never allow ourselves to sit in them and move through them, we never move through them. And they turn into negative thoughts that just marinate in our subconscious. Majority of these are thoughts, habits, negativity from our childhood, from our parents, from school growing up, from, from trauma, of, of losing a best friend when you were a kid or being made fun of or bullied in class. We just never properly handled the emotion. So one of the things that I want you to understand, we all think that our negative feelings are on the opposite side of the spectrum of the positive ones. We think that guilt and anger and frustration are all over here 
and excitement and, and drive and ambition and inspiration and motivation are all over here. And they're on opposite sides of the spectrum. And over, whenever we go to anger or frustration or negative, we think, oh, but I'm so far away from success. Come back to me. You've got it wrong. The reality is they are aligned. Anger, guilt, frustration, negativity is what you have to go through to get to inspiration, to get to motivation, to get to drive, to get to ambition. Four years ago, I lost my best friend, AJ, to suicide. When I lost him, I felt heartbroken. And then I felt resentment of my best friend. I felt resentment that he took himself from this world, away from me and away from our, our family and his family. I, I couldn't help but be angry at him. And then I felt guilty for resenting my best friend who was so tortured that he committed suicide. And then I felt ashamed that I was a coach and I felt anger and resentment and guilt and, and I was supposed to be helping people. So I felt all these negative emotions and had I run from those emotions, I would have forever been tormented by them. But I knew that inspiration was on the other side of them. So what did I do? I actually went and moved through them. I sat through them. I did deep psychosomatic work. I went to therapy. I journaled out my deepest, darkest fears. I really dug into the negativity. And as I sat through the anger, the guilt, the frustration, the resentment, on the other side, I found inspiration. An inspiration that was so powerful and so deeply connected that I could have never found it any other way. Part of the reason my business is where it is right now is because I had the willingness to sit in the crap, to sit in the darkness. Because it's in the darkness that the light shines brightest. You have to be willing to go through the crap to get to the motivation and inspiration on the other side. The second thing that we have to do to start to think more positive thoughts and less negative thoughts is we have to change what we believe. We have to change our beliefs. So let me ask you, are beliefs real? No. Beliefs are not. Beliefs are just thoughts that we think so habitually that they become our own reality. Think about it. Have you ever had a belief that turned out not to be real? Of course you have. At one point, everybody on the face of the earth believed that the earth was flat. Did that make it any more real? No, it did not, right? At one point, everybody believed that the earth was the center of the universe. Did that make it any more real? No, it did not, right? We've all had beliefs that are not real. We have to start to realize that our beliefs are our choices. And if we want to change our beliefs to get a different outcome, we can, but we need to get committed to that so that we can change them now. Now there's three levels of beliefs that we all have. And I wanna share these with you because the higher levels of belief will actually dictate the lower levels of belief. At the very highest point, you have what's called core beliefs. This is what you believe as to being universal truths in the universe. This is reality to you. The next level of belief is what we call identity beliefs. This is who you believe you are as a person. Now, if you believe certain universal beliefs and you believe certain identity beliefs, this is now gonna program everything else that you believe. For example, when we work with coaches, right? Let's say we're gonna have our coaches start to charge more in their coaching business. They wanna go from charging 100 or 200 bucks to 3,000, 5,000 bucks or more. Well, if you believe that you're not good enough, because you believe that the world is a negative place and you're just a victim, well, do you think you're gonna believe that you can charge $3,000? No, you're gonna doubt yourself. But if you believe the world is a good place and that everything in the universe is conspiring to help you achieve your dreams, and you believe you are worthy, then are you gonna believe that you can charge three or $5,000? Of course. Which one of these two people is gonna become more successful? The one that believes the better beliefs. So there's three core beliefs that I want you to start focusing on now and building these beliefs. Just like building a muscle, you have to start working on these. And when you find yourself doubting these beliefs, just come back to them, right? Number one, you have to realize that you are the author of your life. We have to stop playing the victim and start playing the victor and take extreme ownership. The belief you have to believe is if it's meant to be, it's up to me. You are in complete, in complete control. The moment that you hand control out to somebody else is the moment that you give up on your life. You have to take ownership over everything in your world. You either create or allow everything in your life. And the moment you stop doing that is the moment you make excuses, the most, moment that you give up success to somebody else. Number one, you have to take extreme ownership. Number two, you have to realize, just like I mentioned earlier, that you can grow. Every single one of us can grow. Right now, the truth is, this is gonna sound harsh, you're not good enough. Ooh, Sandra, I thought this was supposed to be self-development and motivational. It's the truth. If you were good enough, you would have everything that you ever wanted. Now, I didn't say that you're not worthy. 
You are worthy as a person. You are worthy of success. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of financial freedom. But right now, you're not good enough to actually have it. So we have to start to work on becoming better as a person. Because only once you become better will you actually have more. We have to focus on growing, right? That's number two. And number three, you gotta have a little faith. Jim Carrey once said, I don't want you to have religion. I don't want you to have hope. I want you to have faith. I want you to have faith that in the end, good wins. I want you to have faith that in the end, you will get where you want to go. If you want to become an entrepreneur, I'm going to be honest, logically, it doesn't make any sense. All the ads are stocked against you. Realistically, if you want to be safe, you need to stay in a nine to five. But so many people have realized that safe is actually killing them. The truth is, if you want something more, you have to do something illogical. And in order to do something a little bit illogical, you have to have faith that it's going to turn out in the end. Faith. I'm not saying God. I'm not saying religion. You have to have faith. For me, what it's been, I think, maybe I just watched too many Disney movies growing up. So in my mind, the hero always wins. Love always prevails. Good always comes out on top, right? So whenever I go into something, I have this belief that good will prevail, that I will make it out the other side. I believe in the hero's journey. We all have to go down into the, the deep pit of despair in order to come out the other side, learn it and grow it with all this wisdom to finally have what we really want. So I have faith. The last thing that you can do to shift negative thoughts to positive ones is, my, is the most fun, in my opinion, sheer will. Sheer will. Go prove your negative thoughts wrong. This is by far one of my favorite things to do in the real world because it's one of the fastest ways to change your beliefs. We do this with our clients all the time. We were just talking about getting them to charge prices like 3K and 5K and 8K. One of the fastest ways to get them to change their thoughts and their beliefs, when they were charging $300 before, we give them the script, we tell them they have to go offer their next client $3,000 or $5,000, and then they get an enrollment at $3,000 or $5,000. Oh my God, I just did it. I can no longer say that I can't enroll clients at three or $5,000 because I just did the damn thing. So one of the fastest ways to change your belief is just to face your discomfort, get out there and do the damn thing, right? When I was 10 years old, I wanted to jump off of a, a high dive. So I got up to the high dive and all these negative thoughts started going through my head. These negative stories of, oh my God, I can't do this. What if I jump off and I break my leg? What if, what if you know, I'm gonna drown? Everybody's gonna laugh at me. Nobody's gonna like me, right? I had all these negative thoughts going through my head. So did I climb down off the high dive and go, dad, I need to go to therapy to fix these negative thoughts. No, what did I do? I jumped. I jumped anyway. I had the negative thoughts, but I acted differently. Sheer willpower. I jumped off, boom, hit the water, got out. How did I feel? Elated, excited, motivated, inspired, so happy. So what did I do? I went right back up to the top and I jumped again because I had completely shifted my beliefs and my negative thoughts. So now when I got back up to that top, all I could think about was how exciting, how exhilarating it was when I jumped and when I hit that water before. You can drastically shift your thoughts by simply taking action in the exact opposite direction. We do this with all of our clients with what we call comfort crushing challenges. So we tell our clients to go do things like Go hug five strangers, go ask for five people's number, go sit in a restaurant and get dinner alone and just watch all the negative thoughts go through your head and see how none of them come true. We had people who lived in New York that told me, Xander, if I go try and hug five strangers, I'm gonna get punched in the face. There's no question in my mind. And I said, great, I bet you a hundred bucks you're not gonna get punched in the face. Right, and they said, okay, I'll take that bet. They went and they hugged five strangers, three out of the five started crying because they'd never been hugged by a random person before and they just needed somebody to care. That shifted their belief immediately. Most of the time, one of the fastest ways to shift your negative thoughts to positive ones is just to go do the damn thing that would prove those negative thoughts wrong. In the end, learning how to think positively is not something that you switch overnight. It's a muscle that you must build over time. It's a habit. And just like any habit, it's not gonna take hold in a day. It's not gonna take hold in a week. Maybe a month will start to do some damage. 90 days will really make a difference, but six months, to a year of really, really practicing and putting in the work and the effort, you're gonna completely change who you are as a person. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button below. If you have anything else you want me to cover in a future video, go ahead and comment that below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button, and I'll see you in any other future videos.